don't know how G and it's switching to my Instagram. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get it. Many times never to see each other again. When people think of divorce, they think of two people who go their separate ways. Many times never to see each other again. But some divorces can bring a couple closer together. Meet Debbie and Paul. They were married for seven years and have been divorced for another seven years. Debbie met her present hum husband through Paul, and now she wants to help Paul meet a woman who can make him happy and also get him out of her hair. It's amazing. Let's welcome them both to the show. It's amazing. I, out of her hair, out of her hair, well, how? Like how, how are you doing that? What's out of your hair? So you were married for seven years. What was your married life like together? We were like two brother, a brother and a sister fighting all the time. That's kind of weird, but whatever. We got married when we were 19. I was 19. I had dated him. <laughs> I was 19. He was older. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I hear you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. For five years, he was the only boy I dated, and we grew up together. We were like a brother and a sister. We constantly bickering and fighting. And So what, what was the final straw that made you get divorced? I think we just kind of got tired of fighting about things, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like you're just... You know, me being laid off work, fight about money, fight about this. I think we finally just got tired of fighting, you know. I was cause... pregnant twice. Two times I was pregnant when he got laid off, and it was, that's hard. That's real hard. You think that maybe you just weren't good at problem solving? Like, maybe you guys were just horrible problem solver. Life happened, y'all couldn't problem solve, so you fought more? Yes, you, you were really young. It sounds to yes. me like you just changed into different people. Well, and I grew up, and he never did. Oh, it was a Rick and Morty line where he said, at best... At best, you die at the same time as the person you love at the exact same time. How morbid is that? But he was like that when you love somebody, sometimes people get together and they're so, um, even if they're compatible, over time they become incompatible, which is normal. But the part that I love that was magic was like, and because they're incompatible, they corrode each other, right? Not even compatible. They get together and their personalities corrode each other to the point of incompatibility. Mm. Music, bruh. Music to my ears. Get together and corrode each other to the point of incompatibility. I think that happens so much that people will get together and just slowly but surely do what these two did. Just corrode each other into the point of incompatibility. <laughs> <laughs> Laid off and it was, that's hard. That's real hard. Plus, you, you were really young. It sounds to yes. me like you just changed into different people. Well, and I grew up and he never did. <laughs> Ouch. But I have fun. <laughs> but you have a good time. Oh, is that it? Did you want to? You wanted to have fun, or I wanted get a wild? husband, and he and I felt like I, I had three little children instead of two, or what have you. You know, he was like another kid. <laughs> but how did you manage to remain such good friends? Yeah, wow. Well, Divorce is usually a very painful process. Yes, it is. Um, I don't know. I guess we both felt that it was important to stay friends for the sake of the children. You know, you want your children to have a healthy self-esteem about themselves, and if you're tearing down their father or their mother, they can't view themselves in a healthy way. But you've got to be friends with the person that you're not going to be with anymore. I think being friends with them is crazy. Like, you don't have to be friends with the person you're raising a kid with to, to raise healthy kids, but you can be nice to them, though. I think healthy boundaries are a must. you got to have boundaries, right? And this sounds like they're really closer than they need to be. And life is too short to make each other miserable. So, God, well said, but I mean, <laughs> that's not the reality in this country. I mean, divorce is usually a disaster. I mean, you're so fortunate to, to be so close. After... We were separated for almost a year. We shared the same checkbook until the day of our divorce. And we drove together to the courthouse. We had our divorce. We went out to eat afterwards and we shook hands <laughs> and we, we shook hands and we. We agreed. Let's get along for the kids. Let's not tear each other down. We're going to do this right. This is like the healthiest divorce in the world. Oh, this is beautiful. I give it. I like these people. These people, they've grown on me. It's a, two minutes in, they've grown on me. I love it. I love them. I love these two. These two are nice. I think that is just wonderful. <laughs> Now, why exactly do you want to set him up on a date? <laughs> <laughs> nah, why are you laughing like that? He's, he's around a lot. <laughs> and I feel like I have two husbands. And, um, 
At times, that's great. It's great to have two husbands sometimes, but not all the time because it's hard enough to please one man. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. She said around all the time. So what does that mean? Like, how much around are we talking about? He be hanging out at her house and stuff like that? Like, you know, he don't be outside doing his own thing. He be in the crib trying to be extra daddy. Not that way, no. Backward step. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. There's nothing funky going on here. No, get your mind out uh, of the gutter. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's back. All right. Is it true Yo, that you she met was your for a second. Now through your through your ex husband? Yeah, I actually did. Um, they were involved in the same singles group at church, and I began to direct the choir at this church. And my present husband sat under my nose for a whole year, and I never noticed him. Now, how does how does your husband now feel about your relationship with Paul? Um, what do you think? We get along okay most of the time, you know. I'm not sure if he feels odd about it now and then, you know, but we get along pretty good. A lot of times when there's maybe disagreements between me and her, me and him can talk about it mm -hmm. better than what me and her can. Yeah, well, he... Homie is managing the relationship. You know, it's really big a dude. I like, you know, on a man to man level, man to man, <laughs> I would say homie's out of pocket. But I'm also gonna say that I think it's cool that he's big enough to have a conversation. It's like, you know, this man is her man and deal with him as her man versus dealing with him as the man that replaced him. I think that that takes a different kind of psyche in this situation where the focus wasn't about staying friends with her. The focus is about keeping a good relationship for the kids. He calls me up on the phone and chews me out and I'm left in tears. Michael can call up and go, hey, you know, he just kind of <laughs> smooths it all over and it's great. That's great. Now, what kind of woman are you looking for, for Paul? Someone that's strong, that um, when he does try to be a little too bossy, that she can hold her own and, and you know, keep the balance there. And um, she's really trying to fix homie up. My children, that would be nice. <laughs> and somebody that'll like me. Because <laughs> you go along with the package, package it seems. That's yeah. right. Now, do you like your single life, Paul? I mean, do you necessarily want to get remarried? Not particularly at times. You know, I enjoy the fact that, you know, I can do what I want when I want most of the time. And uh, a lot of times on my work, I'll go out of town. But there's a time, you know, I get lonely. I figure if the right woman comes along, I'll consider it. Well, based on what both of you have told us, we have selected two mm. women for you to meet. Oh, they be, and I think they're really matchmaking? This is great. Who she let's wants match to match make. you up with, Paul, okay? So let's you do can't it. say a word, all right? <laughs> all right. All right. First, let's meet I'm going to ask my daughter to Come pick the person for me. Okay, let's see what Caroline's talking about. Oh, Paul likes it. Paul likes it! <laughs> Look at, hold on, hold on, let's go back. Look at Paul's face. Watch Paul's face, watch Paul's face. Look at his face, look at him! Paul's with it, Paul's with it. Brave Caroline. <laughs> Scared Caroline. <laughs> Don't be scared. He want, he doesn't bite, does he, Debbie? No. Okay. Why don't you ask your questions, Debbie? Okay. Not not too hard. Paul the freak. <laughs> she has She's a car. <laughs> if you had a boyfriend who split his time between you and his ex-wife, how would you handle it? Well, this is the worst kind of question to ask somebody when they haven't even dated the person. There's no, there's absolutely no ties with this man. She has no investment. What exactly do you think, unless she's desperate, unless she's so single, she's willing to automatically come in pretending to be okay with that. Because I think you don't know until you see how they interact. Because the interaction is the thing that kind of sets the tone, right? How do they interact with each other? I think in y'all's situation, I'm, I'm really comfortable with it because of the children involved, and um, I'm not threatened by that. Yeah. If it was a dating situation, I, I think I'd have a little problem with that. That's great. Okay. Describe your ideal date. Where would you go, and what would you do? Well, I like the theater and dinner and uh, either a carriage ride or maybe a a walk in a botanical garden or something. It's like the boringest girl in the world. I, I, I really want to hurry up and get to the other chick so I can ask my kid like which that. one she thinks is better. I like that too. Let's go out together and have a erotic okay. evening. That's romantic <laughs> without a man. <laughs> 
Yo, she's trying to bag the chick for herself. I'm telling you, they into some freaky stuff. We're supposed to be setting Paul up, Debbie. <laughs> Just let her know. Okay. All right, let's say you're married to Paul, and on Valentine's Day, would you greet Paul at the door wearing hearts and flowers or wearing nothing at all? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I think hearts and flowers, definitely. That way what is this? What is this? But he could take them off. <laughs> Give me something to do. <laughs> well, Caroline, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, I'm a single mom. I have two kids, two little boys. Hi, Eric and Ian. And, um, well. <laughs> All right, we'll leave the rest Give to me another the imagination. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Caroline. She's boring, bro. All right. I want to see how I can ask my kid. Cherie. Hi, Cherie. Why don't you? Why he not dating her? Why don't they match her up with the, with the the, the I don't know. That's like the J the C. C grade J Lo. Why don't I get the C grade J Lo instead of whatever he's talking to? Because I mean, this is way better than what the just came on the stage. I'm I'm already disappointed. Poor 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 Paul. You start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm 36 years old. I'm single. I'm from Houston, Texas. I love to play racquetball and work out, and walk. Do you have kids? Well, I have a little four-year-old Brittany Spaniel that I consider my child. <laughs> I, I have a dog, I can relate. Yeah. That's my son. Okay, why don't you ask your questions? Okay. If you had a boyfriend who split his time between you and his ex-wife, how would you handle it? Are we talking 50-50 <gasps> split? That I wouldn't like. <laughs> <laughs> I would want more time, but then too, it also depend on what they were doing with their time when they were together. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, describe your ideal date. Where would you go, and what would you like to do? Ah, oh, same questions. If it was a daytime date, I'd I like love to go, to go to the beach on a nice, cloudy day and just walk along the beach hand in hand. Now, if it's at nighttime, I like to put on my boots and my jeans, and I love to dance. And you better be ready to dance all night long. <laughs> she wins. I'm, like, less impressed, but personality sold me. I'm going to say Paul needs to pick the fun one, not the boring one. Okay. Now, let's say that you and Paul are married, and on Valentine's Day, would you greet Paul at the door wearing hearts and flowers or wearing nothing at all? We're married? Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cherie. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Wow. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. If he don't say Cherie, I'm done. Okay. The coast is clear. <laughs> Debbie, who do you want Paul to go out with? Caroline or Cherie? And why? We want to know why also. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I think I'd fix him up with Cherie. <laughs> Come on out, Cherie. <laughs> Little cheap-ass doors. Hearts and flowers, all right. <laughs> wow, what do you think of the choice? I'm pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have been pleased either way? They were both lovely women. Either way. That's good great. choices. But you trust your ex, huh? Yes, I do. All right, well, good luck. This is like weird, but like cute at the same time. Luck on your date. You'll let us know. <laughs> Keep us posted. We'll find out tomorrow how it went, okay? Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll... Let me ask Amaya, one second. Am I even again? Aw, okay. I wanna ask you to choose which girl you think is the best for us. 
Uh, we're gonna ask my daughter to choose which girl she thinks is prettier. Nah, it's definitely a C grade Jennifer Lopez. You know what I'm talking about. All right, hold on one sec. First, we're gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna take my fast. Come here. You get on this skit side. Get on this side. Get on this side. I'm gonna make sure you're in the camera. So you're on this side. Come here. It's my baby. Get a little lower. Come here. So here. So here. Get, get the get the thigh. Get the thigh. Boom. All right, so this is my beautiful daughter. And we're gonna look at the here's the two girls that they brought out, right? Um we'll be on the <laughs> I had to change this volume on with the volume on, so I just ask her. All right, so that's girl. This is girl number one. That one? No, that's 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 Ricky Lake, bro. That's that's who I make the show after. <laughs> that's, that's, that's young Ricky. This is uh, I don't even remember her name. I think it was Caroline. Caroline. This is the girl. I want you to see her walk out. There we go. My vote goes on Caroline. This is Caroline. Okay, and then this is. Caroline leaving. This is Cherie pulling up. Um, That's C grade Jennifer Lopez. She's actually, out of all the people I've seen so far, not Cherie, but this one is my favorite. I don't know who that is, but he should have dated her. And then, um, because she's way better looking than the two girls that came out. So this girl here, Cherie. Who do you think that guy, this guy, should date out of the, the two she saw? The first one? All right. Well, he ended up with this one. <laughs> the other one was boring. The girl that you prettier. liked? That, the other one's prettier. The other one's prettier, but she was boring. Like, they were asking her questions, and she had the boringest answers. But she was prettier. When this girl came out and had the driest face, I was like, mm, <laughs> mm. You know, I didn't say anything. I'm not a mean person, but I was like, mm. I'd rather him date the C-grade Jennifer Lopez than this joint. But... I am a huge fan of the fact that she was fun. She was like, if it's a de- if it's a daytime date, she wants to go to the beach on a cloudy de- cloudy day and hold hands and walk on the beach. And if it's a nighttime date, she wants to put on her jeans and her boots and go dancing. And he better dance all night long. And he said he likes to have fun. So I thought it made sense. The other girl was like, dinner, a movie, and then a chariot ride. And yeah yeah and he was like like a princess she was like what are you what are you uh what tell us about yourself she goes um i'm a mom and i work and (laughs) she just laughed she had no answers this girl was like yeah i'm a country girl i like to have fun and she had all the answers yeah she had all the answers she was way better spoken so we're going with this one she won i mean she's going with the first one so you're right you're like me you're shallow there you go baby get out of here go back to your game thank you baby You beating everybody? Yeah, beat everybody, sweetheart. Well, after Blicky Lake, I might jump on some some Fortnite with you. I right, love you, sugar. My daughter and I agree. Shorty, this was a better looking. I mean, this was uh, she was not my first choice at all whatsoever. I like her not even not even a little bit. Not my choice, but whatever. We're here now. We're back. By telling us a little bit about your. Tell me a woman who wants to find the perfect mate for her ex-husband. And believe me, she's not easy to please. Don't go away. (laughs) Sometimes divorce does not mean the demands of marriage are over. Meet Liz and Alan. They were married for eight years, and five years after their divorce, they still live in the same housing complex and go on vacation together, even though Liz is remarried. Now Liz wants... Go on vacation together like with the new husband or on vacation together separately? Because you can't go on vacation with my girl because she's your ex. Like, that's that's crazy. Wants to find Alan a new wife, but she would have to fit into Alan and Liz's living situation. And Liz gets final approval. Let's welcome them both. Thank you. You would give Liz final approval of the girl you date? Thank you. Look at look, 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 look at the sister in the back. Look at the sister in the back. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I love black people, bro. Look at the shorty in the back. Her face is like, what you mean she get final approval? Yeah. Hi, Liz. Hi, Ricky. What was married life like for the two of you? Well, we had a lot of fun. We had a very good marriage. But unfortunately, I am a New York person, and in between um, the eight years, I kind of got bored. I got bored with the Utah type of lifestyle, and I needed more excitement. It had nothing to do with Alan. He was a good husband, and he's still a good friend. 
That's so great. Now, how did you take the divorce when it happened? I mean, because well, she's it, the one that wanted it? Yeah, when it happened, it was tough. And it took an adjustment, but mostly it was, our focus was on the kids and making sure that we kept the relationship for the kids. Mm. Now, how did you come about living in the same housing complex? Well, it works. Um, Alan and I, we're married for eight years, which means we do love each other. We're friends, we care about each other. Um, why not live next door to each other so that the children do not have a problem with mommy drive me here, mommy drive me there, daddy take me here. We live in the same complex because then the kids have, and they both have, we both have the same keys on our, on our locks. So that the children only have to deal with one key. And that way they can come back and forth back and, and forth. see who they want to see, when right. they want to see. If it. I'm cooking. I'm going to say that's really close. That's extremely close for two people to live. Like, that's, oh no, this seems more intimate than the other one. Spaghetti, and they want to eat with me that night, even though maybe he has custody, his, it's his six months. They want to eat with me that night? Sure, eat with me. Yeah, but how does your ex, your new husband feel about your ex-husband? My new husband, Michael, Michael is, he's a terrific guy. He loves me, and he will do anything for me. She said, Michael's soft. <laughs> Children. Say so. <laughs> and, yeah, and him and Alan have become friends. They have a lot of things in common. They've been, they were brought up the same way. They were both Mormons out of Utah, so they have the same morals. And you all go on vacation together? Definitely. Sure. We've shared the same room where the kids and Alan were in one bed and Michael and I were in the other. <laughs> yeah, we've done that. Is this too much? All right, look, I'm gonna make a clip of this, but I need to ask, is that too much? Is that too much? That? Do wait, does anybody in the audience have a problem Sorry with to that? Shock you. Stand up, yeah. I understand that y'all have kids in, involved in you know in the relationship, but if y'all didn't want if y'all were divorced, what was the sense of going on vacation together when y'all could have just stayed married and done the same thing? We like each other. We like each other's uh, company. That way the kids get to experience the vacation they with both of us. Right. It, work, it works well. We try us. never to cheat. Right, look, I'm going to make a clip of this, but I need to ask. You seem is that so too much? close. Is there any room for a new woman? Definitely. That's the it hard definitely part, is. <laughs> but she has to fit. She has to fit our plan and our lifestyle. It's got to be a pretty strong woman to fit into that plan, I no, think. No, no, we don't want a strong woman. We want a secure woman. What kind of woman do you want, Liz? I want a woman that is very secure with herself, who's not a big Badinsky, who's not going to try to discipline the children because that's our job. My husband, Michael, never disciplines the children. That's not his job. His job is, the, is there to be there for me, be my lover, and be my children's stepdad. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just seems to me that you want to have your cake and eat it, too. You better believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Why not? not? Well, I think that, uh, oh, I know if I was that woman who was being set up on a date, I would feel a little bit intimidated by you. Well, I'm also a very nice person. You, you seem very nice. But I have a goal, and I want to achieve that goal. We've achieved something that most people can't handle. Now, why do you say that you're the queen? Because I am the queen. <laughs> I am the queen. You know, shorty this out here drinking do family. I worked very hard at putting this family and making it work. And I'm the queen, my daughter, Jessie, She's the princess, my son Dane is the prince, and I look at Alan and Michael as the working bees. And we need another working bee in this. Diabolical. Stand up. Um, since he's included in all your trips that you have with your family or whatever, this is, is he horrible. included in your sex life too? No. no. Alan and I have a mutual partnership with the children. We do not engage. What's up, John Moran? Yo, did you activities. see that? 
it, crazy. That's not we don't, part we of don't our... go on all vacations together. Not either. all. Just some. I mean, Diabolical. You cannot. And you we cannot. We always invite Alan. The children are always invited. And a lot of times he says, sure, I'd love to come. Listen, my little blind baby. Look, homeboy just, oh, she rolled out. Home, home girl just said, I am the queen. My daughter's the prince. My son's the princess. And my boyfriend and ex-husband are worker bees. And I need his girlfriend to be a worker bee. I run everything. That is ridiculous. But it would be nice if he had a mate. So when Michael and I went scuba diving, that Alan could also have his buddy to go scuba diving with him also. Here, we we want to bring out the woman that might actually fit this, this okay. car. This There's no way. This car. There's no woman now, on the planet Earth out, that fits this. You've got a chance to talk to her over the phone and meet her backstage. Why yes. do you think that she's right for Alan? She seemed like a really nice person. She seemed game. She had a good sense of humor. Um, I think... Deanna would be terrific. She seemed game. I love this. Really? All right. Well, I why think don't she we would be terrific. bring her on out right now? Come on out, Dina. <laughs> Boy, are you brave? Whoa, 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 whoa. Ja, you felt her on the Queen Bee joint? Or you felt her on like she'd be game. Which part did you feel her on that? Because she'd be game sound like I want to bring him into our little situation. Like she sounds like she got a situation going on. She said homeboy and we got a voice. He even laughed and said he ain't got no say in the relationship. That's just wild. Hey, Dina. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and I own a dating service called Great Dates, and I was contacted to um, find a match for Alan and find a woman who I felt would be compatible with him based on what I was told. And after I heard about him, um, I thought, well, why not myself? I'm a single woman. And I've spent a lot of time matching up other people and thought this is time for me to meet somebody. And she, she dipping in the sauce. <laughs> She dipping, she dipping in the, she dipping in the sauce. No one, she supposed to be hooking him up. She's like, you know, I like this one. I'm gonna take this one for me. That's crazy. He sounds like somebody that I have a lot in common with, and he sounds like he's got really good family values, which is very important to me. Now, do you have um, children of your own? No, I don't. So I really appreciate when somebody has children and they're they're a real big priority in their in their life. Well, how do you feel about Liz being the extra appendage in this possible relationship? Um, that extra appendage, the queen, being the queen, being the one who decides who lives or who dies. <laughs> Like her mentality is horrible. That's, that's diabolical. I'm be honest with you. She's absolutely, she's a super villain. She's a super villain. She has the same key, which means she has access to that man's house just like he has access to her house. And they could do whatever. Nah, man. She she literally just has two boy, two husbands. That's fine. I'm glad that they have a good relationship. Um, I would rather be with a man who's got a good relationship with his ex than one who's fighting all the time. Good for you. Um, it's, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like that's much better for the children and a lot healthier. So, And Liz and I have talked and... Uh, she basically sounds like a really nice person and um, probably would be fun to get along with. Now, Liz, do you have any pointers for Dina about <laughs> Alan? Well, as far as pointers, just... Listen, I guarantee you she say some underhanded shit. I guarantee you. Watch. Mark my word. Watch it be some underhanded shit. Watch. Treat him good. Treat him good. He deserves to be treated really well. I take it back. Her, for her only line was treat him good. Treat him good. I'm not even mad at that. He deserves a wife that would take care of him and clean up behind him because he's a slob. <laughs> Sorry. I spoke too soon. She did underhand him. I told you I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Sorry, Alan. But he's a good cook, and he likes to cook, and he smokes a lot, so if she can handle that, I couldn't handle it. But hopefully she could. Well, I, I hope you have a great time on your date. We'll, we'll hear you. about it at the end of the show. Thank you. All right, good you. luck. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next, we'll meet a divorced man who wants to find his ex-wife a new Mr. Right. Don't go away. Is it just me, or is it all the ex-wives? Have been divorced... It's all the girlfriends coming back and trying to get the girls implemented into the, get the guys like 
acclimated to a new relationship. It's all the girlfriends trying to, like exes, trying to get them together. Force helps a couple work out all their problems and even become friends. Such is the case with Pam and Thaddeus. They were married for over eight years and have been divorced for nearly three years. Thaddeus wants to find a new man for Pam, but he has to be worthy of her. And we think we've got just the right man. Please welcome them both. It's, it's, a, it's hard out here, Pam. It's hard out here. Having a relationship is not easy. How is your married life together? You want to take this? <laughs> you go ahead. Go ahead. OK. In the beginning, it was great. As time grew on, it got a little worse, and at the end, it was bad. What were some of the problems? <laughs> oh, you want me to tell this one, huh? Yeah, you can Okay, the it. problems were he was a womanizer, okay? Oh, yeah. Accusation, okay. right, right, accusation. right, right. I never got caught, it was all accusation. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You either did it or you didn't. He did. I told him if he, even if he put his hand in a cookie jar and it was seen, he would say it was superimposed in there and it was not his hand. <laughs> so, so okay, so you decided to divorce. Was right. it a messy divorce? No. Not really. No, no. It, was, it was real civil. Mm -mm. Uh, that's why we can sit this close to each other. Right. I, but, but I initiated the divorce. You know, I told him, you know, either make a decision or, you know, what are you going to do? And he sort of like set like a toad on she a She gave me six months, all right? But I didn't know about the six-month limit. I'm sitting at the crib one day with a friend over, and this guy come and serve me these papers. Just blew my whole day. Now, Ricky is hella shady. She out of control. You, the thing she says, I be saying it, and then right after I pause it and say it, she's saying it right after me. But that was, Which means I'm hella shady. Six months later. <laughs> no. But now you're friends. Yeah. Best of friends. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, you want to say? Aren't you afraid he's going to hook you up with another womanizer? I mean... If he womanized you, he, don't you no, think he's going to find someone? the last person he needs to hook me up with. But, you, but he could be vindictive. vindictive. You don't know. Yeah, what are the motives behind wanting to set up your ex-wife? Well, she had one good man in her life. Oh, he's setting her up. So this is the first time we see a dude setting a girl up. She deserves another one. But, you, but would, he could be vindictive. vindictive. You don't know. He says yeah, she had one good man. She deserves another one. Yo, well, I messed with homie. She had one good man in her life. Me. She deserves another one. I love this man. I love this man. This man said, look, look, I'm the fries. <laughs> I love it. Santa, if you were so good, why did you divorce? Because I didn't know about the six-month time limit. It was a gig room. <laughs> So no, she... I, I initiated the divorce. She yes, pulled she the rug out from right. under you, huh, right. Thaddeus? Yeah, she snatched it right now, out. Now, what kind of man do you want for Pam? I want the... Pam's a good woman. She deserves another good man, all right? He's got to be somebody that's into the family life, uh, preferably a professional person. Somebody's going to be good to her and my two daughters. Mm -hmm. If you were such a good man, how come you was, she caught you cheating? You wasn't... Listen, I never got caught. She never caught you cheating? I never got caught. All of the circumstances, I mean, I often said if he ever got Insecurity, insecurity, insecurity. How you never get caught, you guys together seven years. Caught at doing what he was doing, it would be like an open book. And it was. He just didn't care to acknowledge that. But there were a lot of things that I saw, you know, uh, after we at were the separated. end of the relationship. No, not even after separation, darling. This was, you know. <laughs> During the marriage, and you know how you take things. You... They don't sound like they've really, recall, like, they've, uh, what's I'm looking for? They've really reconciled their relationship because they should be on terms, at least. They're not even on terms with this. This situation, I never got caught. I mean, he's kind of like, nah, I, I don't know. Because I feel like a lot of a lot of these shows that I've been doing the Blicky Lake for a couple of days, it's like the number nine, and uh, it's the same thing. You put it on the back shelf, and you just sort of keep it, and if time comes and you need to retrieve it, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And so I asked for questions. I mean, I asked for answers. He couldn't answer them. So it's like saying, yeah, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, without Pam, admitting. Do you think that Thaddeus still holds a torch for you? Heck yeah. <laughs> I love these two. These two are funny because they seem toxic as hell. How you gonna hook her up and you still got a thing for her? Like we asked her, like we asked her. And if that's the case, why do you want him to fix you up with someone? I don't hold that torch for him. <laughs>
why would you put him in that position though? The violation is egregious. Why would you put him in that position if you know he still got feelings for you? Is it self? Here's my question, right? Here's my question. Hold on a second. Let me let me ask this on 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 the on the on the on the on the, on the pod. We had it right. Ask it the right way, right? Is it selfish to ask your ex to set you up if you know your ex still has feelings for you? Is that selfish? Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I'm loving this. Thaddeus' sister helped us find a man for you. So yeah. would you like to meet him now? Come on out, Skip. <laughs> Skip looks zesty as hell. Z Skip looked like a sassy version of the dude sitting next to her. This is wild. <laughs> Not her rubbing her hands together like a piece of chocolate just walked out. And put your damn collar down. <laughs> and she sighed out. Oh my God. Girls ain't shit. Girls ain't shit. These girls are horrible. Girls ain't shit. I swear to God, they ain't shit. Selfish to ask your ex to set you up if you know your ex still has feelings for you. Put him in that position, though. The violation is egregious. Why would you put him in that position if you know he still got feelings for you? Is it self? Here's my question, right? Here's my question. Hold on a second. Let me let me ask this on, on on the on the on the on the on the, on the pod. We had it right. Ask it the right way, right? Is it selfish to ask your ex to set you up if you know your ex still has feelings for you? Put him in that position, though. The vi I love it. Sorry, I gotta put this on right now. I can't wait. <laughs> Skip hasn't even said one word and he's awfully popular. Skip, why don't you Skip tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a personal trainer, uh, strength and conditioning coach from Detroit, Michigan. Consult with the school system. And uh, not the mm. Mm, mm. <laughs> Spent a lot of time in my job, and um, I met that. I think he's a good guy. I think he can fix me up, uh, and uh, I don't have time to find a date. So, well, oh, Pam, like, of course, bro. What are you talking about? I mean, oh, you on you on YouTube? So YouTube doesn't have me set up for it yet. I think it's in the description, though. If you go on YouTube, it's not in the description, Brody. It ain't the, the link in it. Yeah, it's in the stream labs. Support the stream. It's in the description for the stream, for the live stream. Seems like a great woman. Yeah, she is. So I've been here. I, she I is. thought that was Nick, because I don't have time either. I'm real busy, too. You know what? Look, look, you want to be busy, too. You ain't busy, mama. Stop lying. You just want to be busy, because Skip out here skippingly busy. The kids and work and all, so that's pretty good. Are you still breathing, Pam? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excited for you. Good luck on your date. All right. Is Skip with We're it gonna though? take a break. Next, we'll meet a couple whose divorce became final last week, and he's already asking her advice about dating. Don't go away. Seven years and he moving too fast. Breaking up is hard. Hey man, I appreciate that. That's I, I really do. I appreciate that. You know, all I'm doing is just working on content, baby. I love doing this. Do. Especially if you still live in the same house. Shannon and John were married for seven years and they're everybody's seven years. I think seven years is to get rid of the get rid of the wife or get rid of the husband, Mark, because everybody's been married seven years. The divorce just became final two weeks ago. Shannon wants to find a woman for John because he drives her crazy. Please welcome them. I got you one second, Brody. Crazy. Both. I 
right, let's get it. How does John drive you crazy? I quit being his wife and became his mother. And he still thinks I should cook, clean, do his laundry, and then I'm supposed to fix him up with people, and <laughs> he wants the best of both worlds. But if you, I mean, if you're not married anymore, your divorce just came final, why are you still living in the same house together? We're best friends. <laughs> Mother, best friends, this is confusing. And the way she was saying is that she was complaining at first is, we're best friends. Like, you know, she gave the excuse. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think maybe she's asking for it by living with him? Yes. Stand up. If you dislike him so much, why, why would you put give that to someone else? I mean, I, no, I don't it dislike seems as him. if you, you want to get rid of somebody and just give the problem to someone else. I mean, <laughs> Damn, you know what I hate about this show? They stay condemning the men off top. Like, they call that man a cheater. He never got caught cheating. He was not a cheater. She, it was all alleged. This situation, she just had complaints about him. We don't even know. We, he didn't give him a chance to rebuttal anything. She said it. It's law. Now we're judging him off of her take of him. And I think that people are all different compared to just de de um, deciding. I'm saying deciding. Depending on who's experiencing them, they're different. That's what no, it seems like. No, it's not like that. I love John to death. We're just not compatible as husband and wife. We're great friends. We're just not cut out to be married, I guess. That just doesn't work. But now... He still wants all the benefits of being married. Are you an authority on a woman? Yeah, the way she looked up, yo, was like he was getting the cookie. Woman for him? On finding a woman for him? Mm. I'm, I'm not I sure. I say I'm an authority, but... but he yo, these side eyes are killing me, yo. They don't... Are you sure you're not... Two weeks ago was not that long ago before, you know, the love was doing the love thing. He needs someone who won't take his... Oh. Okay. If you say that he annoys you, why don't you just tell him to leave and live your own life and let him live his own life separately and have himself find his own woman and you find your own man? Um. Yeah, because she came out swinging. She did say homie was mad annoying, but I mean, I don't know. She, look at this look. She keep looking at him. So I know this couple, right? And this couple is, uh, they're very close to each other, right? They're extremely close to each other. And this thing that they do all the time is that they always look. Whenever I ask a question to the girl, the girl will look over at the guy and the guy will look at the girl. It's like they have to think by having eye contact. They do that all the time. What I'm noticing from this chick, this chick does the same thing. Whenever she's about to give an answer, um, whenever she's about to get an answer, she looks over at him. Like she thinks with him. And I don't, like, not, it's not a weird thing. I think it's a codependent thing. A lot of it's for financial reasons. We share a house, he pays half the rent, I pay half the rent, he pays half the utilities, I pay half the utilities. We really didn't see each other all that much. Um, no, I work nights working. and he works days. And I'm you have a great there. friendship. You right. do, I mean, yeah. we right. want the record to stand have. that you are great friends now. Right. Yeah. What is it like when you're dating? Do you ask for advice, John? We double date. Oh, uh, yeah. I uh, come to her if it doesn't work out. The double date? Out the reason why, or maybe she can give me advice or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Okay. I have a question and a comment. I think you like giving it as much as he likes asking you to do things. Yeah, and I do. Also, I do. if you had a counselor, do you think you all would get back together? No. No, no never. No, because we tried that, and uh, we were just bickering back and forth constantly, so. Mm -hmm. We're well, fine if you don't involve money or sex. If it comes down to that, it's... No good. Is this, all right, I'm going to ask this question. I don't really want to know. What she says, we're fine unless you involve, involve money or sex. Is the sex bad or is the sex complicating things? Because that's a very broad way to interject sex into your incompatibility. Good. So leave it at friendship. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, Shannon, you didn't come up with anybody in particular that you wanted for John. So we used the information that both of you gave us and we chose for you. Let's bring out Tracy. Come on out, Tracy. I'm not with it. Hope she gets a hard no. I'm not with it. I'm not with Tracy at all. I'm not Is a fan of Tracy. Is it just me or do they look alike? <laughs> They're even wearing the same color. 
That's incredible. <laughs> and you did this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Tracy. Well, I've never met anybody yet that has been very nice, or they are at first and they haven't been at the end. So I figure if somebody has the guts to bring their ex-husband on stage, he's going to be worth something. <laughs> What are you looking for in a man? You think that if she's bringing him on stage that he's worth something? This is your credential for being worth something? Or in John? Somebody that isn't controlling, won't tell me what to do, lets me have my own space. <laughs> Stand up. Yeah, but if she said that he likes her to do her laundry, his laundry cook, clean, all of this, isn't that being a little demanding? Well, I'll just, no, I'll, I'll really. teach him how to do it. <laughs> I can do it. Shannon, what kind of woman do you want for John? Someone sweet, someone who won't take advantage of John. John's very easy to take advantage of. He, f uh -oh. you are. He, he used to be. He's naive. He's gullible. I think. That's what we get in divorce. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Tracy, the woman we picked? I think she's adorable. <laughs> we talked backstage. She's great. Because you look I like didn't sisters. Know it was two weeks. <laughs> I think she's adorable. It's crazy. It's just two know. weeks. We've been separated for eight months, though, dating other people and stuff, so. Well, what advice? Do you have any advice? Her voice sounds alluring. We've been separated for eight months, though, dating other people and stuff, though. Like, she sounds like a 1-900 operator. To offer, Tracy? Um, be yourself. Um, John's very shy, but that doesn't mean that he's not interested. He won't be shy for He's... Long. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, she came out touching his hair. She kind of, she kind of sort of made the, the pretense of like, look, I'm trying to touch you. Um, he's not very talkative until he gets to know you, and then he won't shut up. Does he have, <laughs> does he have any nasty habits that she should know about? No. He, yes, you do. He's a, <laughs> he's a drummer in a rock band, and he beats on everything constantly. I mean, he's forever tapping things, kick. See, see, constantly. <laughs> he used to keep a rhythm at night before when we'd get to bed. He'd put himself to sleep, tapping his foot, keeping a rhythm. And it's, it's really annoying. She hated that this man was a delicate, dedicated musician. And I think that that's like the biggest piece of trash. I'm glad you divorced her. John, you, you dodged a bullet. John, how do you feel? Are you nervous? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> well, I hope it works out. You make a great looking couple. <laughs> Thanks. OK. You look just like All your right. ex-wife. Great looking couple. I love this. Of the two of you. Wow. The resemblance is really uncanny. You're not related, are They're you? They're not wrong, though. No. <laughs> Yo, what are we giving this? That, what are we giving this? How much of like one through five, how much they look like? Uh, one being, I appreciate it, I'll follow back. What's one being, they look nothing alike, alike. Five being, they look way too much alike. What are we giving this? I'm going to say, you know, honestly, the skin color, the eyeliner, even the bangs, they look a lot alike. I think the earrings are even similar. It's kind of crazy how much alike they look. They actually do look a lot alike as far as, like, presentation. Not that I know of. Wow. All right. Well, good luck on your date. And you know what? It's time for that date right now. Okay. We've met all of our couples who are f being fixed up by their exes. And now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to stop taping for today while we send our new couples out for a romantic dinner. When you see us again after this break, it will really be tomorrow. And we'll see if any love connections were made. So stay tuned. All right. Follow me, guys. Time for your date. Wish them luck, everybody. <laughs> Five, 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 ten, ten, ten. As you can oh, man. You can see our guests are also day. in different clothes. I should go to different we days. We even have a different audience because it's the next day, and our new couples have gone out on their dates. We sent all of our ex-couples to La Granadan restaurant in Manhattan with their new dates. And the exes? First, Wait, they took him on a date with the ex? This is the weirdest episode ever. No. We let the exes get to know their ex-mates' dates a little bit to see if they made the right choices. This is crazy. I don't think so. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. Alrighty. See you later. Bye. 
Then we let the new couple sit down and get to know each other on their own. All right, okay, Debbie, what that. did you think about Cher Cherie when you I met her at the restaurant? I thought she was a great choice for Paul. Lots of fun, lots of energy, and I knew that that would be his dream, day dream date for a big night out in New York. Do you think she was physically the type that he's looking for? Yeah, I thought she was attractive, and I think he deserves that, too. All right, why don't we hear what they Aww. think of each other? Why don't you come on? So I like her personality, even though I think that this whole perspective of hooking your ex up on a date is... Is, is 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 i don't know it's tyranny like let that man date who he wants to date out paul and sheree paul and sheree come out they come out holding hands they come out together is he unhappy hi hi welcome back you want Wait. to sit Thank closer <laughs> If you wish, feel free. Well, you look all chummy. What's with the chocolates? Well, as you remember what we said earlier about Valentine's, this is what's left. Wait a Just minute. Kidding. <laughs> oh my God. I thought he was out here talking about they were saying that on Valentine's Day, she asked her she asked him both a question. She said, uh, would you uh, meet him at the, you're married. He comes home on Valentine's Day. Would you meet him with flowers and candy, or would you meet him completely naked? And she said, "We're married," and she was like, "Naked." So that's why he was making a joke about having hit on the first night. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's Did sweet, anything sweet, happen? Sweet. Not. Come on now, listen. Do you want us to tell you the truth or lie? No. <laughs> I I'm not mad at this. <laughs> I am not mad at this. Not even a little bit. I'm okay. This is, this is, this is what I'm talking about. You can tell, right? You can tell she gave some yams up, boy. All right. She said, come on, Paul, come move these things around. We'll get to the good stuff in a minute. I think they already got to the good stuff, Ricky. I don't know. How did you feel when you arrived at the restaurant together? Oh, we had a great time. It was fun. It was good food, we had good atmosphere, we got to talk to each other, and plus the couple's next to us, so we had a really nice time. Any nookie nookie? Well, we had... <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time. She, she, she... <laughs> Ricky is messy. <laughs> Ricky is full of messy, bro. <laughs> Look at her. She's so messy, bro. Time, but not that good a time. <laughs> What do you think about the, the future for you two? Do you think you'll see each other again? We'll see each other again. Wow. <laughs> she likes him. She likes him. Happy. I look at But I feel a little bit responsible. That's so great. <laughs> I'm really excited. Okay. She's, now, what about you, Liz? So what did you think of Dina when you well, met her? I, I definitely don't think it would work. No. Now, why? She's not his type. She's a really nice lady. We went out afterwards. We had a really, really good time. She's a lot of fun. I think maybe they'll go play golfing now and then, but that's not really what I wanted for my ex-husband. She want block? What I want is somebody that wears my size, and I can maybe <laughs> dip into her closet. I want someone that wears my size so I can dip into her closet. She don't like her size. to say about her date with Alan. Why don't you come on out, Dina and Alan? Yo, this chick is ruthless, bro. I, I told you she was ruthless. From the moment she said it, I told you she was diabolical. She like, I want her to date somebody that she I can steal clothes from. <laughs> That's not how it works. Look, look, look. Hoping she approves. Um... Yeah, I think um, I think you can. It's no different. It's the same as my what you call it. Same as my tags. It's all my all my uh, tags are the same. No, I'm I lied. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's different. The cash app is uh. Yeah, that's a cash out. 
Dina, did you hear? I appreciate it. Good about looking. You? Mostly, <laughs> I, mo I heard most of it. Thank you. What What did you think of the date? Oh uh, the, my I God! The date went really nicely. I mean, we had a really nice evening. We had a wonderful dinner. We didn't lack for things to talk about. I just don't think there's really any chemistry between us. But was it at all weird, Alan, to have your ex-wife along with her opinion? No, not really. We had, we had a good time together. It was. <laughs> Like, like she says, though, there really wasn't a lot of chemistry there, and you would need a lot of chemistry to overcome the obvious obstacles. Mm -hmm. This is so bad. You, can you speak for yourself? Sure, what do you want to know? <laughs> no, I mean, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Did he pick your husband for you? Excuse me? Did he pick your husband for you? Of course not. No, but oh, I did approve well, it. But, but, but. Him 100%. I did approve of him before he did they approve got of married. Him before we got married. We need to take a break. We'll hear how our other two new couples got Yo, along and if their exes agree. I think it's too late to talk anything about Liz, but this new crowd is with it. When we get back. Don't want challenge her last time. She so got to do whatever she wanted to do. This time she's getting challenged. They didn't care about who they end up with. They, I think so. Well, we, we, we definitely can. Couples. Now let's move on. But I think it depends that, on the I think it depends on the relationship. I think a man cares less when he does not when he had to detach himself emotionally from the woman. If you put a man through so much that he has to detach from you emotionally in order to deal with you, then I think he has no care whatsoever about the relationship that you get into because he can't be the man in your life the way he was a man in your life when he was with you. So you have to make this separation. And I think that that's a real thing. At least for me personally, I have to make a separation so that I'm not overextending myself for someone who isn't safe to overextend myself with because some women will take advantage of your good nature for the sake of taking advantage of your good nature. So you have to take that step back. Um, I will say that if you remove yourself from the situation and you truly separate from that woman, then it doesn't matter who she's with and who she's dating because it's none of your concern. But if you're close to them and you're emotionally invested because that person has secured an emotional investment from you, even outside of a, a romantic investment, then I think you can do, I think you can, you you approving and all those things. The conversations matter at that point. Thaddeus, you had high hopes for Pam and Skip. What did you think of Skip when you met him? I think Skip's going to be good for Pam. Though, personally, I would have liked to have seen him dap up, choke up. I mean, you know, this is TV. <laughs> oh, so you didn't I like the fact that he was wearing just a T-shirt? No, nah, that didn't. It sort of turned me off. As long as it turned her on, that's cool. And I think it definitely did that. And I think, I think they're going to do well because they've been doing the magpie routine. I mean, constant chatter. So that's good. It reminds me of 17 years ago when Pam and I got together. Really? I just hope he can get past the love part. Because when Pam falls in love, she likes to fatten you up so nobody else will want you. I love this dude. This dude going through four different degrees of separation with this joint, but I love it. I ain't gonna hold you. I love it. I love it. I think it's dope that he has this like idea in his head that Pam and him are having this relationship that don't really matter. <laughs> What's going on, Glory? I see you in there. Thaddeus, are you at all jealous that they were getting on so well? No, I'm glad. I'm sort of glad. You happy? Yeah, she deserves another good man in her life. All right, well, let's bring out Pam and Skip. Come on out, Pam and Skip. Let's hear how it went. <laughs> how did it go? Excellent, excellent. It was a great, it was a great day. We found a lot to talk about. Uh, we had a lot of things in common. We liked music. We liked candlelight dinners, mm. and we made a date. So wait, mm. by saying candlelight dinners, was it romantic? Pretty much so, I would say. I mean, I enjoyed it. The food was fabulous. The conversation was great. Uh, just good, a real good great. night. So what are some of the things you have in common? Well, like I said, music. Um, just our thought as far as our spirituality. Um, I like to get my body together, and I thought, ooh. <laughs> I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one, fam. <laughs> she had to, like, her whole life changed. She said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I want to know why you're coming on the show like, oh, you're all macho with a shirt, you call up like Elvis Presley. No reason for that. The other man over there, you got class. Oh. He stood up to hate you know that. 
First off, when this man Skip came out, the entire crowd oohed and odd, and everybody was on his bumper. Look at Skip's face. Skip ready to jump off that chair and go smack. He was too little. Hold on, he too little to talk that kind of trash I to Skip. I know why you're coming on the show like, oh, you're all macho with a shirt. You call up like Elvis Presley. No reason for that. The other man over there, you got class. Oh. Oh. Look, look at Skip. <laughs> Yo, Skip. Skip, everybody loves Skip. You can't talk to Skip like that. You can't um, talk to I Skip like that. Obvious. Having a tight t shirt shows those. Fabulous That's muscles of thought. his. It didn't make much of a difference to me if he had a suit or not. I figured he had a body, why not show it, you know? I, I feel the same way. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Black people are out of control. I, I swear to God, I love black people so much. <laughs> I love them. I'll never not love black people. This is amazing. You got it, show it. Show it off, baby. Do your thing. Go. I love it. Okay, it's time uh, Yeah, I responded to message Shannon's on IG, man. I just got a message. John and Tracy. What did you think of Tracy first? At I the don't restaurant. I know how well John and Tracy got along, but Tracy and I got along great. Tracy's great. You look like sisters. It's amazing. Oh, Tracy, all right. Let's bring out great. John and Tracy and hear exactly how that date went. Like, she already like her. She on her Oh, she on his arm. <laughs> the Barbie twins. They wore the same outfit. <laughs> on us that we looked alike so before so the show we went shopping you. today and we were gonna blow everybody's mind and it's amazing <laughs> isn't it that's crazy so how is tracy as a person i mean is she different than shannon uh they're pretty much pretty close i mean they're like uh like <laughs> twins almost but you think you'll see each other again oh definitely and, and if i don't see him we're going out we're partying <laughs> she ain't got herself a girlfriend that's crazy <laughs> My question is for the gentleman over here. Why would you want somebody the same as, as, as your ex, ex-wife, is it? Well, right? it's, it's the same thing's gonna happen again. You're gonna wind up leaving her again. <laughs> well, it's a different yeah, it's person. Nice. It's a, Does this make sense? Is, is getting really, get, breaking up with your ex-wife and getting a, a new, having her choose your new girlfriend who acts exactly like your last girlfriend does that make any sense? They're so they, they act so much alike that they went out shopping and bought the same outfit and did their hair the same way to blow everybody's mind. And she just told you in front of everybody, if we don't work out, I'm going out with your ex-wife anyway. Like that's not where you want to be at. It's a different person, so it you know it might work out. It's the same person. You lying to yourself, bro. You lying to yourself. It's the same person. All right. Well, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. being here today and I hope that our new couples can get along as well as our divorced couples do even if they don't end up together thanks for watching see you next time all right so before I get out of here what I did start the show with today was hold on a second um no I want to get back over here to my IG um what I didn't do was I didn't show this junk the proper way I did want you guys to I started this off today with saying about the fathers, right? So it started off with this particular clip here. I think the audio will play, but this was such a cool, not even cool. This was such a crazy, just crazy in general. This was crazy to me. Like, so the story goes this, the father is upset because he goes to the barbershop and I don't know exactly why he's upset. I will break that down again later, but I want to go back into this father goes into this barbershop and his son is in the chair and hers, his his, uh, his baby mother's boyfriend has taken his son to the barbershop. And this is how this went. Your boy. Should I say our boy? Yeah, ain't that shit. That's my mother son. World store. That's my mother. Stay on that shit. Hey, I told you that. I told you that shit. 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 It's your first time. Hey, let me go ahead and call his mama real quick. And we gonna hit you to the bottom. Are you going ahead and do that? And she better say the right shit, cause if she don't, I'm about to get the swing in this. Oh God, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I'm trying to poke you, man. Yeah. 
First things first, this was crazy to watch simply because as a father, you never want to be this unhinged and this set off for, uh, like, g in general, you never want to be this set off. This set off, this level of anger is crazy. Um, a bar The barbershop letting these dudes get, not even letting these dudes, letting that guy be that upset and that angry and not handling them. Like, you know, they didn't put their foot down. They kind of let it happen. You know what I'm saying? It was a spectacle. You don't know what that man going through. I don't think that this is about the haircut. Look how angry this man is. Look how much he want to fight the dude. Like, I don't think it's about the haircut. I think the haircut is just the catalyst. It's just the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't think that... You're right. A haircut shouldn't mean that much. It shouldn't trigger you that much. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that homeboy that's cutting his father, cutting the son's hair, still cutting the son's hair, not dealing with the fact this man had said, I'll slap you and I'll, I'll put your hands on, I'm swinging on people. No one even checked that behavior to let that go. Like the people, in the barbers in that barbershop let that happen. Like that's the culture of that place. That shouldn't be the culture of that place. Um, when I brought it up, only brought it up to let you, you know, let fathers know like it's your job to be minimizing stress to your child, not creating stress for your child. That should have been handled properly between the mother and the father. You know what I'm saying? Like that should have been handled properly between mom and dad. Like he should have had whatever, whatever. If he was at his wits end and he couldn't control himself, then he should have chilled out. He shouldn't have put himself in a situation where he was unhinged, going to that barbershop, creating a spectacle like that, or even getting to the point where he wants to fight. He yelling into the phone, disrespecting the mother like you. your son sees you disrespect the mom. When you say things like you can't see him till you pay child support, they see that. You can't do things like that. You can't do things like that. Yeah, something's completely missing because ain't no, that much anger from that man is not, that's not coming from, oh, just some random, you know, misunderstanding, miscommunication. Nah, they, homie is going through something completely different. To, to pick him up out of the chair mid-haircut? Come on now. Mid-haircut? That's not the experience that you get from somebody that's not, that that is, that's pain, bro. He going through something. That's not normal. That's abnormal as hell. That's not normal behavior for somebody that's okay. He not okay. He not okay. And I wouldn't say whatever he's struggling with, whatever he's going through is showcasing right there. Like that man's on edge. Like, look at him. His posture and everything over a haircut. You know, even, even if it was a conversation, let's say, right, let's just run it this way. He already talked to this man about taking his son out and taking his son to the barbershop. He already had a discussion with this man. He said, listen, do not take my son to the barbershop. I don't want to see you in barbershop with my son no more. Woo, 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 woo. That should have, that behavior, that situation should have been checked and worked out before he 
got to the point where he's in this barbershop yelling this man's face. Him, ah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Also, jumping in that man's face like that, that man was, the, the restraint that the, the stepfather held on to, I think I, I respect that because it ain't for you to set the situation off for, for, for that man's son. It is his son. Give him his kid. But I think, you know, that much restraint is hard to come by. Like, he'd have been any, another dude, he would have felt like his mess, his mess. And like, you heard the dude say, you're going to let him disrespect you like that? Like, the, the the culture of that place is toxic. That barbershop failed them, man. Oh, take it outside and they walked off. Like, nah, take it. They, nobody wanted to smoke. Nobody wanted to actually manage that situation and let those dudes go off and do that. And I think that the person who suffers the most in that situation isn't the barbershop, isn't the stepfather, isn't the father. The person who suffers the most in that situation is the kid. And that's always, as parents, when you get to these situations like this, the person who suffers is the child. The person who loses is the child. Neither one of y'all gained anything. You didn't gain time with your son. Your son lost something in that situation. He had to witness something that can break something in him. And you and you take it away from him. You take a piece of his childhood away from him. He's going to behave differently because of that. That's a triggering effect right there. If he doesn't want another man around his child, he does have to say so. But his conversation needs to be between the mother and father. Exactly. And that's why when he let him take him, I respect that. You should let him take him. You shouldn't get in the way of him and his kid. But you like, he, she said you can't have him until you pay child support. You cannot legally keep a child away from a parent about child support. You can take him back to court, but you can't take away from their child. You can't take away their parenting time over child support. You don't get to punish the father with child support. Pay me my money. You can't see your kid. Completely, completely not how that works. That's not what you're allowed to do. That's not in your rights. And as a father, he should go through court to get his time. But making a spectacle like that, Damn near going to prison, possibly getting shot. Like, if we hit that man, you don't know who on that man's side. You're like, yeah, he took him. That whole situation is toxic. And I hope that homeboy gets it worked out. Like, like whatever he's struggling with, I hope he comes to terms with because that's trash. That's a really trash situation. Anyway, Brody, thank you, Abe. Ja, I appreciate you for rocking with me, yo. The cash apps are appreciated as well, man. I'm 100%, um, you know, getting back on tomorrow. I'll always go live between, you know, I try to go between 8 and 9. That's what I normally do my Blicky Lake show. Uh, Blicky Lake today was mad fun. I swung back around to this one because I had more viewers. So I want everybody to see the clip because this is the one that's more viral. This is the one that I really wanted to make sure. Don't let this just go viral. You know, Don't let this be a viral clip that goes around. Let's make it a learning opportunity, right? We all can learn from this situation. Be it as a man, you can learn to manage yourself better because... The person who looked like a fool was the person who felt like he was most right. And the person who prayed the price wasn't the man who acted like a fool. It was that child that was a part of that foolishness. You know what I mean? Uh, it wasn't the person who looked like a punk wasn't the dude that didn't fight and didn't didn't swing and didn't didn't respond to him being angry. If anything, I think the stepfather had the most restraint in that situation. I wouldn't say he violated. I would say the woman violated that man, that stepfather, by putting him in that situation. Because you should have managed that much better than that. Yeah, hit me up, man. Uh... Ja, I'm going to be back on in a little bit. I'll be back on my Twitch. Uh, I'm not going to be on YouTube. I'm not going to be on Instagram. I'll be on Twitch in a little bit. Uh, gaming. But first, I'm going to make a little bit of dinner. So I'm going to take about a 30-minute break. I'll be back on around 8.30 playing Smite. If you want to keep with the conversation or just come back and see me, I'll be on twitch.tv slash blue51. I'll put it in the chat just so on both streams you can see it. Twitch, you're going to see this and you're going to be all right. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? I know Twitch, you know where I'm at because you're on my Twitch. I want to make sure my people that don't have Twitch can see me too. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, share the con Like and share the content. Peace. Ja, I'll catch you on, on Twitch if you catch me on there.